According to the general theory of evolution, as a result of the alleged explosion of a tiny ball of matter, billions of galaxies formed in the universe. Supposedly, the evolution of galaxies and every planet, moon, and star within these galaxies all came about by non-purposeful, unintelligent accidents. Likewise, every life form that eventually appeared on Earth purportedly evolved by mindless, random chances and mutations over many millions of years. Though atheistic evolutionists insist that the Earth and all living things on it have no grand, intelligent designer, still many repeatedly refer to amazing design in nature. A few years ago, National Geographic published an article titled, Biomimetics, Designed by Nature. The word design, or one of its derivatives, appeared no less than seven times in the article in reference to nature's designs. The author, Tom Muller, noted how capillaries between the scales of a thorny devil lizard are evidently designed to guide water toward the lizard's mouth. He then explained how insects offer an embarrassment of design riches. Muller referred to nature's sophistication and clever devices and praised nature for being able to turn simple materials into structures of fantastic complexity, strength, and toughness. Brilliant and well-funded scientists around the world admit that living things perform many feats too mysterious and complicated to be able to replicate. Many atheists admit that living things look designed. In his book, Why Darwin Matters, Michael Shermer wrote, The design inference comes naturally. The reason people think that a designer created the world is because it looks designed. In his book, Why Evolution is True, Jerry Coyne wrote, If anything is true about nature, it is that plants and animals seem intricately and almost perfectly designed for living their lives. Nature resembles a well-oiled machine with every species an intricate cog or gear. The more one learns about plants and animals, the more one marvels at how well their designs fit their ways of life. But how can you get design without purpose, intelligence, and deliberate planning? Consider a few definitions that Merriam-Webster Online Dictionary gives for design. A particular purpose held in view by an individual or group. Deliberate purposive planning. A deliberate undercover project or scheme. After defining design as a drawing, sketch, or graphic representation of a detailed plan, the American Heritage Dictionary of the English Language noted that design may be defined as the purposeful or inventive arrangement of parts or details. A design is preceded by deliberate purposive planning, a detailed plan, or an inventive arrangement. A design is the effect not of time, chance, and unintelligent random accidents, but of the purposeful planning and deliberate actions of an inventor or designer. A designer brings about a design. Thus, by definition, design demands a designer, and one with some measure of intelligence. Unbelievers contend that nature blindly cobbles together myriad random experiments over thousands of generations in order to produce complex living organisms that the world's top scientists have yet to comprehend. However, it's far more logical to believe that just as a painting demands a painter and a poem a poet, the world's amazing designs which continually stump the most intelligent scientists on earth demand an intelligent designer. After learning of the uncanny, complicated maneuverability of a little blowfly, one evolutionist confessed to feeling the need to regard the insect on bended knee in admiration. Sadly, many have refused to have God in their knowledge and have worshiped and served the creature rather than the creator. Whereas atheists highlight nature and encourage readers to learn from what evolution has wrought, mankind would do better to heed the example of a noble inventor and designer from the mid-1800s. Samuel Morse, who gave us the telegraph system and Morse code, sent the very first telegraph from Washington, D.C. to Baltimore, Maryland on May 24, 1844. His message consisted of a brief quotation from Numbers 23, 23. What hath God wrought? That is, 
Look at what God has done. Samuel Morris unashamedly testified to what everyone should understand. Complex functional design demands a designer. Morris's code and telegraph system were the immediate effects of a designer, Samuel Morris. But the grand designer who created Morse and every material thing that Morse used to invent his telegraph system is God. For every house is built by someone, but he who built all things is God. Samuel Morse recognized this marvelous self-evident truth. Should we not logically acknowledge it as well?